Hi guys, welcome back to another Planty video. My name is Shannon, this is Planted 386. Thank you so much for stopping by today, for clicking. I really appreciate you. If this is your first time, welcome. We love plants over here. We talk all things plants and I hope you will consider subscribing and sticking around being a part of it. I do upload on TikTok, Instagram. I recently created a Facebook account as well for Planted 386 and I hope to see you there. Um, if you're returning, I appreciate you. Thank you for being in the comments. It's been so much fun getting to know you guys. Uh, I enjoy so much chatting with you down there. And so, yeah, if you have any questions along the videos, feel free to let me know. Or if you just want to become planty friends, sounds good to me. I have been thoroughly enjoying this community over here. Everybody has been so kind. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about glow ups. Uh, just plants that have really taken off, really surprised me. Um, ironically, a lot of them are in the other side of the house. The They're the plants that have given me a hard time and I'm just kind of like, I'm over you. I'm gonna put you over here and whatever happens, happens. The funny thing is, some of them just love that side of the house. That's what I'm realizing. So if they don't love the pergola, then they seem to like the side of the house. And one thing in particular I realized, and I wish I would have learned this much sooner. I wish I would have what's banished the plants sooner to that side of the house, but uh, I didn't. And so the genus that seems to love the side of the house is Alocasia. So many alocasia have come and gone in my collection. I'm to the point now where I don't I don't purchase them anymore. As much as I love them, they don't seem to like me the same. And it's just kind of heartbreaking. I also find them to be spider mite magnets. Uh, I have enough issues with spider mites in my collection. With anthuriums, I feel like usually it's the emergent leaf that gets affected by spider mites. Um, but if you can get that emergent leaf situation under control, then they don't seem to go after the hardened leaves, at least in in my world. Uh, but with alocasia, it's just a constant battle. And you're going to see that with these, these two that I'm about to show you. Funny thing is, despite the spider mites, they seem to thrive on. So it's just, it's one of those things. I'm going to spray them down, obviously, before I put them up. Um, I do have them separated from anything else, and um, yeah, let's get into it. So the first one is this Alocasia Silver Dragon. I did not clip leaves. I didn't do anything. I kind of wanted you guys to just see what we're working with, but this plant was literally on its way out. I mean, I I pretty much put it over over there in the window and was like, this is, this is going to be dead by the time I... I, I water next week. I, I'm so shocked that it is it is alive. Um, not only is it alive, but it's it's sized up quite a bit. I mean, you can see these are the leaves that I was sort of working with. And since then, it's put out these three. I am sorry. I know you guys are probably going to see spider mites. I feel you. I hate looking at them too. Um, I don't know if I called this dragon's breath or silver drag. This is alocasia dragon's breath. Sorry. I don't know if I said that right in the beginning. Definitely dragon's breath um yeah it's covered in spider mites but it is so beautiful like I've seen these mature and the shape of the leaves are so stunning I wish I had a better example to show up and I know this is a glow up video so this is kind of a bad way to start but if like I said this was literally down to nothing so uh because I struggle with alocasia so much I am really excited to see that I still have leaves on this thing and I have another one seemingly on the way. So I am going to, like I said, treat these plants for the spider mites, but I guarantee they're going to come back because with alocasia, they seem to always, they, they always have spider mites. Do you guys have that issue too or is it just me? The next one is a doozy. So this is alocasia chlorosome. One of my faves, the color is absolutely beautiful. Like I can see webbing. Can you guys see the webbing? I don't know if you can see it or not, but like these are infested. Um, 
they are they're the they're the only two plants like in that section so i'm not like super freaked out about it uh they definitely need to be treated but yeah it just week after week it continues to put out a new leaf i do have it in this disgusting pot of pond this is actual pond and perlite and as you can see it is just loving life i am i am shocked i feel bad for her i feel bad for the spider mites but um we're gonna take care of it i just seriously you guys i can't believe this i think when i put it over there it had one leaf it was down to one very sad little leaf i mean you can see like how small the leaves were and this is its like newest no sorry this is its newest so yeah it's definitely jumped up in size also usually this this reservoir gets bone dry like there'll be no water in it at all and i don't even i couldn't even tell you how many days like i say i water every week but these plants in this side of the house they may go a little longer sometimes they may go 10 to 12 days uh, and these alocasias are thirsty. This one, especially the Corazon, I know it needs to be repotted, but every time I repot them, they freak out and they die. So I'm just going to continue to let her be. Like I said, I will treat her, but, um, I am not going to go in there disturbing any roots. <laughs> okay, you guys, next on my list is Anthurium papillolaminum. So this was purchased from equigenera back in march mm -hmm. as a recent import so i knew i was taking a risk purchasing a recently imported anthurium but i got it home and it did amazing things for me like i had pretty much no issues with it i was kind of surprised and all of a sudden i think something fungal happened because it just started to yellow basically like yellowing what like yellow circles and yellowing around the ridges and i just kind of knew that it was on the decline so i ended up cutting off all the leaves which was so painful to do and i ended up putting it into a cloche with 100 percent humidity and just some sphagnum moss and while it took a while it has regenerated this was the first leaf that it gave me and a lot of times when I have rehabbed an anthurium the first leaf that comes out is usually something like totally wonky uh, so I was really fortunate that this came out beautiful and it just made me feel like oh my gosh this is exactly what I want like look at how dark this plant is I don't really have a ton of dark anthuriums and certainly none with any venation like this so I also love the lobes on this pappy and yeah this is its newest leaf it is still relatively soft i don't really see this expanding much more but i just i mean these emergence the red backs like oh my gosh so pretty and yes it appears as though it has reached catafil which is so exciting and yeah I'm pretty stoked to see where this goes. I think we're on the men now. I don't see any roots coming out of the bottom, so I am not going to worry about repotting her. I'm going to see where this takes us. But yeah, I just thought I would share her with you. Pretty excited to have her. Okay, you guys, next up is my Anthurium No ID. This is one of the, the, the craziest, like... <laughs> I don't know growth spurts of all of them like this leaf like the size up is just crazy there is a little bit of damage unfortunately just from it hitting things in the cabinet coming out but this leaf is absolutely so cool I have no idea <laughs> what it is but I absolutely think these leaves are so beautiful um it looks like it's got another one already coming and it looks to be quite a large leaf so i do have this growing in a fishbowl 
that I thrifted from our thrift store locally and I do have a Lekka Reservoir. All this is soil and then I have moss here. What I'm probably going to do is remove the moss and add some more soil until I, I can't do that anymore. Um, the roots look absolutely amazing and I am loving growing Ethereum in this, this type of way, this layered sort of effect. Just seems to be perfect. They seem to love it and I don't have issues with, like, I just don't have as much issues with crispy leaves um, anytime I set them up in this manner. And I do feel like that's played a big role in the growth. I don't know why these leaves sort of buckled like that. I think, I think it's just because of the way that it was positioned while it was hardening off. This will probably have to come out of the cabinet at some at some point. I do have it just behind me in the mills bow wide. I have no idea where I'm going to start putting all of these Ethereums as they start to grow, but I just thought I would share her with you. Like I said, I really wish I knew what it was, but I think that's kind of part of the fun, and I really enjoyed watching her grow. Okay, next on my list is my Ethereum Zara. This is one I'm very, very excited about because I, I had to completely rehab her. And I also got this, this particular plant as a teeny tiny little seedling. And I had never really, I didn't really have a ton of experience with Anthurium seedlings. And so we, we kind of went through it. We did a little dance, if you will. And now I think we have figured each other out. So the this leaf here is kind of like, this is one of the first ones she ended up putting out once she came back. But we have this one. I love how dark they get once they harden off. Uh, this one here, so pretty. And then that is her most recent. So super exciting. We have a nice little size up here. I did recently repot her into this vessel. So I think we're going to be good for another two or three leaves, I would say, hopefully. Um, this leaf is definitely still has, it, it has a little more room to grow. I don't believe this is finished yet. Um, but yeah, they, the, the beauty in this is just that beautiful pink line straight down the center. I live for it. It's so pretty and this is definitely one I really really wanted but they are pretty pricey in you know in a large size so I am very grateful to have one on her way it, it it's been different growing this in Ethereum. I will say not the easiest uh, both the Zara and the doc block that I'm about to show you have both given me some trouble so uh, I'm just excited to have them I'm excited that that, you know, we're here. And again, she's just in the same setup as all of the others, just in that sort of um, reservoir with the moss and the soil. So yeah, I'm very proud of her. <laughs> okay, this is my Doc Block Michelle Crossed with Self. Now, this has been a whole ride. Uh, not only did we start over from scratch, but she has now, like, produced offsets. She has a new leaf coming, uh, two new leaves. We have one that's already sort of popped up right here, and then we have another one coming right here. The funny thing, though, is the sinus is fused, which is interesting. I can't say that I recall seeing that in this particular plant, but I mean, it was sold to me as, as Doc Black Michelle Cross self. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know guys. It's just kind of cool. Um, so this, it did start out with an open sinus because this leaf, this leaf, um, all of them previously have open sinuses that only started with this leaf. So this one, came out fused and I was like oh okay that's different and then this one came out and I was like oh okay that that must be where we're going now uh I know there is definitely unfortunately some damage to this leaf that makes me very sad because 
because I've waited so long for this leaf. But I, I grazed it up against something when it was freshly emerging and I know better. We always know better, but we still do things we shouldn't do. <laughs> anyway, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that she's this big. There's really not much red or anything to her. Um, I don't know, guys. I'm kind of uh, curious about this one, but happy it's alive, happy it's here. It definitely took me down a road. Uh, both of these Ethereums, actually all three that we talked about, are from the same grower from um, Plants and Pamperin, which is an Etsy grower. Just kind of trying to put her back in her little place there. She's one that still has some time in the cabinet, but uh, some of these other ones, I'm like, where am I putting them? Okay, next is my Clara Nervium. Hi, Sam. Hello. This is so exciting, you guys. I think this is the most darling little plant. I mean, picture perfect. If, if, if you think of like a house plant sitting on a table, like on a dining room table, this is what I picture. Like, I just picture this. It just is. Look at these leaves. They are so darling. And my goodness, has this thing just taken off? This was from The Green Escape. I purchased this back in May, you guys. May as a teeny tiny seedling. Like, this came so small. It's already produced an offset, but those tiny little leaves you see down there, that's what I started with. So this thing has just taken off in the last few months that I've had it. I mean, the first jump was this leaf. I mean, this is crazy. But overall, I love how this is growing, just sort of, I just love how these petioles, like the petiole to leaf ratio, I just think is perfect. And, uh, my God, I mean, how can you look at this and not feel all the things? So my hope is to eventually get this to, uh, flower and I'm hoping to breed her eventually, but yes, I am so proud. So I love looking at her same mixture, same setup as the rest. Uh, I did get this one from EFG orchids. And yeah, I just love it. If you've been interested, this one I, I've heard can be on the trickier side and I do have another Clara Nervium hybrid that has been very tricky, but this has been just super easy. So I don't know, I've heard kind of both. For me, this one has just been a breeze, a joy. I love looking at it. Sorry if you hear the doggos, they, are, they decide that it's time for a wrestle usually around the time that I start to film. So, you know, they're just showing off. All right, you guys, before my camera battery dies, if you see me in an outfit changed, it's because the battery died and I've decided to pick this up on another day. But um, this plant is one of my most, I would say this is one that my eyes gravitate to the most in my collection and that kind of took me totally by surprise. So. This is, and I've, I've showed her many times on the channel because she's just always doing something and she's just so beautiful. Uh, this is Anthurium. It's kind of a complex hybrid. It is Anthurium. I always have to look because I can never remember. So Crystal Red Michelle crossed Ace Crystal Red. I showed her recently. I believe it was in a favorites video and literally... I think in that favorites video, she was giving me this leaf. So that's what it amounted to. So beautiful. Oh my goodness. And now we have this one coming out. For me, you guys, it's, this one isn't about the venation. It's about the lack thereof. It's about the color. It's about the way that the, the, the color shifts every time it moves and it doesn't matter at what stage the leaf is in, whether it's fully hardened off or just coming out. This is just, I swear, one of the most striking Ethereum I think I have in my collection. Um, some may see it and feel like it's a bit underrated because it doesn't have a ton of venation, but 
I, I think for me, it's the color. It, it sort of looks like an oil slick at times. Like sometimes it looks green, sometimes it looks blue. And then of course with the red, the pop of red, stamp, stamp. That's not being very mindful. Um, but yeah, I wanted to share it with you. I know I talk about this plant all the time on here, but I mean, you guys look at that leaf. I mean, it's, it's so beautiful. Really quick, I want to show you my Anthurium vitara folium variegated. It is, it has grown so much. You guys, this was like the teeniest, tiniest little babe in the pot. So small, just those little tiny leaves and literally since June, it has really taken off. So I, I wanted to share it with you. I love it. The van the, the uh, variegation is so striking. I, I literally cannot wait to see what this looks like grown out. It has given me absolutely no troubles at all. It's just, just like the green form. If you've been around, you know, uh, the Vitara folium is one of my most treasured. It is, she is one of my most favorites. For sure as you can see my lights have turned off because it's starting to get dark around here and as i said my battery is going to fail soon so we're gonna pop off okay guys we are back different day <laughs> outfit change uh, the battery died, all the things, but I only have a few plants left to show you, so I just wanted to finish up with this one really quick. If you've been on the fence about this one, um, I say it's it's definitely, like, make it, make it one on your wish list because it's so easy to grow out and it is so rewarding. I know it doesn't look like much now per se, but if you've ever seen my my mature green form, kind of gives you an idea of just how it's going to grow out. And it's to me, it is just literally one of my most treasured plants. So excited to see that one grow out. The next ones are outside. It is a rainy day here in Florida. It's actually been raining nonstop now for... I don't know, it seems like a week. I don't even know. Uh, everything is wet, but I have no choice. So we're gonna head out there. Both of them are in the pergola. Hopefully we won't get too wet. Hopefully the sound of the rain on the pergola won't be too distracting, because I really wanna show you these last two plants and I have no idea when this rain is going to stop, but we are grateful for it. So let's go outside. Okay guys, we are in the pergola outside. Um, Whenever I refer to the pergola, this is kind of the space that I'm talking about. Hopefully you can hear okay, hopefully the sound's okay. Um, the rain is being gentle right now, which is nice because it's been rather aggressive the last few days. I want to show you my summer glory because this plant in the last year that I've had it has just, it is absolutely amazing and I think it is so beautiful. I want to share it with you because if you have this plant and you've contemplated putting it outside, if you live in an environment that will um, allow that, I say put it outside, you guys. I grew this inside for probably the first year that I had it and it did well for me, but since putting it out here, it has totally evolved. Okay, you guys, this is her newest leaf. I should have gotten out here a couple days ago because this was the most beautiful blushy pink color. Um, she already has another one coming out. This is a little plastic pot that I found at the Dollar Tree. She definitely is ready for a repot. Um, I do have the most beautiful planter ready for her, so that is something I need to do before season changes. But yeah, let's pull her out from the Gloriosum so you can kind of see a little bit better what we are looking at. Don't mind all the leaves. It's been storming. So yeah, I mean, how striking. Let's kind of back up a little. How striking, guys super easy grower and when these leaves come in they are just absolutely stunning now i've i've 
obviously I've seen Summer Glory in several collections. It's a pretty common philodendron at this point, but rarely do I see it grown out with these larger leaves. Uh, I feel like oftentimes, I don't know, I, I, it's rare that I see them on the more mature side in someone's collection. So I don't know, I thought maybe it was something different for you to see. And um, also to kind of point out the potential that this plant has. I think it's absolutely striking. I did put her right up next to my Gloriosa over here because it was doing so well. I figured, well, <laughs> this one would probably like it here too. And I think we're right on the money about that. So this leaf will definitely green up a little bit more. Uh, it's still a little bit soft. And it's also loving the rain that we're getting. Okay, so the last one I have is my Jose Bueno. And it's going to be a little challenging to kind of spot it through this huge mousier situation that I have going on. <laughs> I am going to be cutting this plant back very soon. Uh, I should have probably done it before this video, but I'll try to get in there so you guys can, can see. This is one of the leaves. It's an older one, a little tattered. It kind of got pots up in this situation, but there's some of her other leaves. <laughs> and over here is really, I mean, look at this one, you guys. Oh my goodness. I, I'm not even sure you can gauge the size, but the, these leaves are, are massive. Um, and over here, we have all of her others. This is her most recent, way at the tippy top. Looks like a beauty. She's definitely in need of some more space, and I plan on giving that to her. Um, like I said, I'm going to, to chop this mouse ear, and like this thing grows like crazy. Look how it will just bend and start growing wherever, wherever. Uh, I will show you, let's go around here. Y'all, we, we haven't even been able to mow the grass because it hasn't stopped raining. But the mouse ear, this is the flowers that it gives. And I love these leaves. They're so fuzzy and beautiful. My issue with it is it's just, it's like taking over. It's become, it's become wild. We have to like, yeah, we have to tame this craziness. But over here, I'm like literally using my whole body are the other leaves. I know it's a little challenging, but I adore the Jose Bueno. Um, I'm not super into phyllos as much anymore. I'm kind of more into Anthurium at this place in my growing life. <laughs> but this is one that I just can't help but to love it. I mean, the variegation is absolutely striking. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my plants, spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. It's a free way that you can help my channel out and help me reach other planty people. I absolutely love discovering other planty creators. Um, I feel like there's so many options out there, but I feel like oftentimes we're kind of recommended the same ones over and over. So anytime I find someone new, I I love clicking on their content just to see what they're about. Um, I don't know, it's just one of my favorite pastimes is checking out new, new creators on YouTube. So helping me out by subscribing is epic, you guys. Thank you so much for being here.